So to this point, we've enumerated many examples of markets that play a huge role uh, in the technology ecosystem. Uh, and we've also discussed one of the many dimensions along which you can compare and contrast these different markets, namely uh, the degree of centralization or decentralization um, in those markets. So where I want to go next is I want to talk about the types of ways that markets can fail or the kinds of challenges that can arise uh, when you're managing one of these markets. Uh, I'm mostly just going to focus on uh, one particular challenge, the challenge of congestion. So when you're in the happy situation that your platform has so many users, there's an overwhelming number of uh, options for the possible transactions. Uh, but before I talk about congestion on the, on the next slide, let me say a little bit about the reason it's so common to see congestion uh, in technology platforms, which has to do with network effects. What's a network effect? Well, that's the effect that one user of a good or service has on the value of that good or service to its other users. Generally, when people talk about network effects, they mean them as a, as a good thing. So usually people are referring to the increase in value of a good or service because of more users uh, of that good or service. A related idea you might hear about is something called Metcalfe's Law. Uh, and that points out that, you know, in a market from the perspective of any fixed participant, you know, the number of your possible trading uh, partners is growing linearly with the number of other users. Um, but the number of overall possible pairings, the number of possible trades is growing faster than linearly with the number of participants. It's growing quadratically uh, with the number of participants. Now, the platforms we've been discussing, for the most part, exhibit very strong network effects. So, for example, should we be surprised that one or a few social networks are so dominant? Well, no, because there's very strong network effects. You want to use the social network that your friends are using. So naturally, you have everybody piling on into the same social network because of the network effects. Similarly, should we be surprised that there are so few dominant operating systems? Again, no, for the same reasons, right? So uh, as a developer, you want to be writing applications for an operating system that lots of people use. And as a user, you want to be using an operating system uh, which is serviced by lots of different developers. And more generally, when in the situation where you have strong network effects, you should be expecting there to be one or a very small number of big players with almost all the users, uh, and then everyone else being a quite small player. And in this situation, right, for those major players, they're going to have to deal with congestion in their markets. So many participants uh, that it's not even realistic for one participant to evaluate all of the available options for their possible transactions. Now, of course, it's much better to have too many participants than to have too few. The latter problem is a problem known as a market being too thin. And of course, we've seen countless startups over the years fail for having too thin a market, attracting too few participants. But still, having lots of participants has its own challenges, which we'll talk about uh, on the next slide. To finish this slide, let me just connect this idea of network effects and these sort of dominant players uh, to something maybe you know, you've know you heard about in the news uh, over the years, which is antitrust regulation of technology companies. Perhaps you've wondered to yourself, you know, when you hear about Silicon Valley leaders sort of griping about the prospect of government regulation, you know, maybe you wonder why would anyone want to regulate these big tech companies anyway? What are they trying to accomplish? Um, and there's you know, several answers to that question, but often a really big part of the answer has to do with network effects. Um, the concern being that is, you know, suppose you have a big platform with lots of users and there are very strong network effects. Well, then in, in effect, your users have a very high switching cost. If one of your users switches to a different platform, which has fewer users, they're going to enjoy less network effects. So there's a high switching cost for a user to leave a platform with lots of users. And so the concern then is, you know, one of these platforms with strong network effects and lots of users that uh, they might be able to exploit these high switching costs of its users uh, in various ways. You know, maybe they don't, you know, they don't feel pressured to innovate. Uh, maybe they rise, raise their prices. Maybe they engage in anti-competitive behavior. And these are the kinds of worries that lead to some to call for increased regulation. You know, at the extreme, you know, people discuss sometimes breaking up a company like Google or Facebook into multiple smaller independent companies, you know, which has happened in the past, for example, with AT&T slash Bell back in the 1980s, you know, or with Standard Oil seven decades before that. 
Now, on the other hand, you know, having a big market share is not in and of itself a crime. Uh, and nobody wants to simply penalize success on principle. So to justify government action against a company, it's necessary that a company also engages in anti-competitive behavior. And that was exactly the government's charge in the U.S. versus Microsoft case about 20 years ago. Uh, so the government claimed that Microsoft at that time was exploiting its dominance in the operating systems market to extend that dominance to the Internet browser market by bundling Internet Explorer, Microsoft's browser, bundling that in with Microsoft's operating system, uh, and doing this without necessarily innovating, without offering a superior product. Uh, and you know, maybe you've heard that in recent years, Google has also been embroiled in similar situations um, and stands accused of exploiting its dominance in search to also conquer other sectors. Um, the European Union, in fact, a, a couple years ago, fined Google about $5 billion uh, for anti-competitive behavior. Um, the U.S. has not taken any action, at least as of yet. And in fact, this is actually pretty common that you see um, these kinds of cases proceed in Europe before in the U.S. And if, if you've wondered ever why that was, it's because the law is a little bit different uh, in the EU versus in the U.S. Uh, the U.S. tends to focus on whether consumer prices have been driven upward. Um, and of course, the Google is sort of a strange case because, you know, using Google is basically free. Uh, while the EU uses a broader definition of anti-competitive behavior, and it was on those grounds that they decided that uh, Google's behavior qualified. So that was a little bit of a digression. You know, I just wanted to help connect these concepts that you're learning to the real world, you know, the stuff you read about uh, in the newspaper. Um, as far as, you know, the short course goes, the main takeaway from this slide is just that uh, in the types of systems we're talking about, there are strong network effects. So you're going to see platforms with tons and tons of users. That is, you're going to see markets that are challenged by congestion. Next, I want to drill down on some of the options available to you if you have a market with congestion about how to ensure that it continues to function smoothly.